Hey Capcom Giants family, your host Eric Coffey, and today's video is, man, let me tell you, this video is awesome. I am excited for you, I'm excited for the people watching. I, as you see, I control myself, I stopped banging on the desk because people said it was hearing it in the microphone. So again, but yes, no, I'm super excited for this video. This is my response to a comment that someone left me on my YouTube channel. So again, if you leave comments, sometimes, again, I do read most of the comments, but sometimes I will even make a video responding. And because it was such a long, well thought out comment, I felt like it deserved a video response. So again, I just want to thank the person for that, uh, personally for leaving that comment. And this is my response, but this also, it helps answer questions that a lot of us are facing, a lot of things that we're thinking about there. And so again, I definitely, Joseph, Joseph El Bebe, thank you for your comment. And I hope that this response answers it. And by you leaving it answers the questions that are looming in so many people's minds, which are interesting enough, Eric, I heard you say, don't aim for set asides. And that's right. Uh, I tell people don't aim for set asides. And we'll explain further in this video why I say that. And then he goes on to ask several questions. How do you gain um, without capital? How can someone gain traction? Are there any testimonials of disenfranchised low income persons getting federal contracts without building past performance history? And where do they get the capital from to pre perform the task? I don't think they will qualify. And then the other question he asked is oh, Why is that showing up? Stop, shouldn't, I'm sorry, shouldn't the state and city county be one of the first places you start just asking questions and curious why he said don't aim for set sites? And he, he's referring to me. He's been doing his research for a coach, and so far everyone's saying the same things except what was mentioned above. Mm. All right, so now going back, so I'm the one that's saying this kind of stuff. I see there's not many people that speaking on the subject, so help is very limited. And please, 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 please don't compare me, compare me to a married Caucasian couple to everyone else and say they did it without any set sides because a low income disenfranchised and God knows what kind of person can't compete without a starting point that's attainable. Good question, Joseph. I like it. So let's go ahead and start with his first response. So again, he says, how would one without capital gain any traction? And that's a great, 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 great question. Um, and you know what I say to that is consulting. Because if you don't have any capital, that you're gonna have a hard time trying to go out and actually win contracts with the government because Far few and in between does the government give you any money up front to do contracts. Now, that is contrary to some of my people out there that are doing uh, local work and city work and they're doing micro purchases. In some of those instances, yes, they may give you some money up front. But again, that's not enough money to actually take care of yourself, to feed your family, to leave your job. These That's low in stuff that is only enough to get you by so that you can feel like you were successful. But at the end of the day, we want to make real money. At least that's what I'm here to teach. So again, it, there's nothing wrong with doing $1,000 contracts, $2,000 contracts, making 500 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks. That's great, that's cool. That's not what I teach. So if that's the kind of coach you're looking for, you gotta go somewhere else. Uh, what we do teach for those people that wanna replace their salaries, replace their incomes, make six figures and up, I teach consulting route because why? As a consultant, you don't actually have to have any money to consult, no money. So as a consultant, you don't need any money to consult. All you need is hustle, grit, good work ethic, and learn federal procurement. So again, if you're willing to learn federal procurement, you can become a consultant. Now, how does that work? Well, I've got 13 videos here that explain consulting. Some of them are 30 minutes, 22 minutes, and we'll go through that process. So again, we already have 13 videos that talk about the consulting route. In a nutshell, ultimately what you do is you find companies, uh, people, places that are wanting to get into this marketplace. They have an established business. Their business is already up and running. They've got past performance. They've got history. They have all the things that you said basically that you did not have, right? And so they have these things. And then what we do is we work out a contract between them that if we were to find them federal contracts and work, then they would pay us in response to that. And so that's what we do. And we have examples of people doing that. In fact, I'm gonna skip over to a man right here on the screen, Miguel, who did just that. So when you talk about, Eric, are there any testimonials of disenfranchised low-income persons getting a federal government contract without building past performance history? I don't know if he's a low income person, but I can tell you that 
he did it without money, and he did it without past performance, and he did it without capital. So that answers three of your checkboxes right there. And again, this content is already on my website. You just have to look for it. With only 577 views, people are not searching out the content, and I know it's so hard because I've got 600 and so videos online. So I guess, poor you, Pobrecito, my 600 plus videos, you don't have the time to go through and watch all this stuff but I had the time to make it, right? So again, I don't feel bad for those folks out there who didn't make time to go out here and watch this stuff, to learn it, to understand it, because we are putting the information out there for free. So again, here, Miguel went out, and in this clip we talk about, let's just play some of it real quick. Are not that extrovert person that are able to pick up the phone to connect right. the people and not afraid to ask the questions and things like that. But your that is your strength. It's been your strength since the right. beginning, since the days that. outside going talk to the girls <laughs> or telling the marine he's why is he dressed like a nutcracker. Like you yeah, know, yeah. your voice and your personality was your strength. Yep, yep, absolutely. And and you know, there's a lot of you, you know it, Maria. Like a lot of people are like, I don't know what industry to get in. And that was the other thing. Like, now you know this is your strength. Now you know, okay, I'm going to be a consultant. Now the next question people have to ask themselves, and a lot of people get stuck here, and I mean stuck. Like, they just can't figure it out. It's like, what do I do with it now? Right. So I would say if you're, if you're contemplating, you know, what industry you want to get into, um, I would say, what do you do at work currently? Because a lot of these things that you're doing at work might be being, you know, bought by the government via a service or a product or whatever the case might be. So is what you're already doing that you know you can do, is that being purchased by the government? Figure that out, right? What max code is it, right? Like what agencies are buying it, right? And, and GovCon, that community walks you clearly through those steps and how to do that. So now right? that you wanted to be a consultant, what was your first one? So what was your I first got away try? from the courier service stuff. I knew, I understood construction pretty well because of you, Eric, and the community, right? Um, but I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. So I just literally said, okay, again, I like to bring things to a level where I can understand how much money do I want to make, right? Um, how much money do I need to sustain myself right now? I bought a little bit of real estate. I did this. So this is what I have coming in. Um, and some of the larger contracts were in construction and IT, right? And I started there. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to, you know, go go with these two industries. And I started with IT. So but no, no, you did not start with IT. Dude. I remember you. All right, so long story short, uh, he ended up doing IT, met a client um, that was already an established firm that was already working in the IT field. And then from there, he was able to uh, help that client secure a contract just shy of a million dollars. And long story short, you know, he gets his piece. They had the agreement. He worked it out. And his first deal net him over six figures. So again, um, when we talk about do I have any uh, actual testimonials of disenfranchised people doing this without capital and without past performance? I absolutely do have that. And not only do I, this, I don't just have one story. Uh, we have multiple stories of that. In fact, here, I'm going to take you back to my other page. Let me get back on the screen. Uh, let me go back over here. Give me one second. Let me navigate this before I got all these windows up. Here we go. So here on this particular page, this is our podcast. It's called Making a Giants Podcast. As you can see on here, there's we made nine episodes so far. Maria is the host. Making a Giants Podcast is the podcast that we interview our student winners. Students. So these are students of mine that were in our community that took our course. That's what he's talking about, the whole GovCon program. They're students of mine that were in our course that have won their first contracts. So we got tired of just putting up their congratulations, congratulations. We started making an entire new podcast where we interviewed those students. So again, we talk about uh, on this particular thing, don't tell me about a Caucasian, white, married couple, okay? Obviously, there's nobody on here that looks like that. There's zero people that are look like that, that are even in that category. But because I want, I'm here to bring value and to show you better than I can tell you, let's go ahead and listen to another story. In fact, the one that's on the screen right now student ash let's go ahead and pull up her story so you can hear that one what she says ash and 
her story with Marie Martinez, where she sits down and discusses how she first came to learn about Gulf Con Giants, which for me is remarkable in itself because like so many people out there, she was hearing the same messages of get your certification, get your certification, and that's all you needed. And so she thought to herself, coming from her, some of her previous positions and jobs, that if I just got my certification, then what makes me unique to any and all the people in the government? And so she dug a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. found me, and she said the part that triggered it was, I was saying, don't get your certification, don't get your certification. Right. And so that's what attracted her to us and the Gulf Giants. And from there, she went on to develop her business. She signed up, joined the group, joined the organization, met another fellow student, and from there, her story began. So again, stay tuned for this upcoming episode with Maria Martinez and student Ash on Making a Giant. Does that sound familiar? Don't so get your certification. Today on this episode of Making a Giant, I kind of want to welcome someone that's super Only? special to us because as soon as she came into the GovCon community, she was ready to go and she did everything that she needed to do to make this happen. And her success came very sh in a very short time compared to a lot of us. And the reason behind it is because she took the steps. She did the actions that gave her the success. So, A, I want to welcome you today. And this is important. Listen to this. Do not cut this off right now. You want to hear this because this is like explain exactly what you're asking. Why I said don't get certifications. So, I just wanted to see where you got started because I think that's very important. But I want to start off especially with how did you find the I love her intro. I love this intro. Right, interesting enough, I was, well, I guess the attraction to uh, the certification, right? Everyone preaches 8A, women-owned business. You have these. These are the, the keys to the magic kingdom of, of money, right? They, they always present it that way, right? Yes. And really what it is, is it's a shiny object in the room because through these certifications, the first thing they ask you is you have uh, work performance, previous history. Like, you can't get certain things unless you proved yourself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So somehow, some way, a GovCon Giant video pop that says, you don't need 8A. Don't get 8A. <laughs> don't get 8A. Right? So, you know. Thank you, Ash. You That's right. Between you have to prove in, you know, your ethnicity and all these things. It, it's a consuming thing. And if you go down that path of. Hold on. Before Ash continues, I just want you to know that Ash sent me an email recently. This video is posted in June. OK, um, Ash sent me an email and that said she did her first million dollar quarter. OK, so just want to kind of share that. So that way, for all those people that are thinking about tuning off at this point, just want to let you know that. Trying to stick to certifications and obtain a certification as a your route to success is actually a detour, right? Detour. So the attraction to that GovCon video where, you know, where Eric said, don't do it. I said, oh, OK, because, yeah, I'm tired of this, right? You know? Okay, yeah, let me figure out why we shouldn't get the certification. Right. right. So I watched the video, and it was just the same thing I was thinking along the, the way of why am I doing this if they keep asking me to prove myself, right? So the way I look at certification now is like it's like a fence, right? They build this fence, mm -hmm. and the people that are actually getting the money are the people that dug the tunnel underneath the fence, right? Right. So everyone's getting money underneath, right? And you're uh -huh. looking, you know, it's a way of keeping you out. And with the real, the real. I guess description of a of a certification should be the leverage, not right. the opportunity to create. Right. Right. It's really the leverage part. Of right. It. So to answer the question, I came about it because you guys are the only ones that said you don't need a certification. <laughs> the <laughs> only ones. You're like, wait, everyone's telling me to, and this guy comes on and says not to do it. it Hold on, let's go back to what my man said. Hey, I've been doing research for coach so far. Everyone is saying the same thing except me. That's right. I'm the only one that tells you don't get a certification, and I'm proud of it, and I'm sticking to my guns. Keep watching Ash and learn something. It just intrigues you. Know, like, why am I, like, what, let's see what he has to say of why I shouldn't do it. And at this point, when you were searching certifications, um, just, and I asked this because I came about it as not knowing anything about government contracts. Like, I had no idea this right. existed. Yeah, we saw War Dogs, but it's just another movie. But, and I, and it just, I put it in the back of my head and I'm like, I just kept going with my life. How did you hear about government contracts? All right, we're going to stop it there and we're going to continue on because again, there's no need to rub it in. But, you know, people are asking, are there testimonials of disenfranchised people, low income persons building federal contract without performance history? Dun, dun. Sorry, this way. 
There you are. Okay, now, again, we continue to show you this. Um, and where do they get the capital to pre-perform the task? If you have no capital, first of all, I don't suggest you start a business without capital. Uh, you got to have some capital to start any type of business, right? So again, even if you have to uh, register your LLC, uh, if you have to file for your uh, occupational license, whatever license you need for the, to operate your business within that state, it's going to take some capital. So you can't have absolutely no capital. Uh, but I understand what you mean. Ultimately, you mean you have very little capital. So I get it, right? But, you know, you're starting a business, you're providing a service, you're providing some type of goods. Uh, you've got to have something to at least, you've got to, like, if you were, let's say you were going to do janitorial, you've got to have a mop, a broom, you've got to have some stuff to clean, right? So you got to have some tools to be able to actually do the business, unless the actual business is you as the operator. So if you are, for example, um, a operator, so you're the 1099 worker, you're a programmer, software developer, and you're going to be the one doing the work, then you don't need any tools and you can actually go after a contract and you be that one FTE position. So that's another way of doing it um, where you're providing like a service that is, you know, you are that person. And again, but we have examples of that as well. So um, we've had examples of that under our podcast, Carol Craig from Craig Technologies. Uh, she started off that way where she was actual programmer and working on that. We also have uh, other people on here um, that have done the same thing where they became the operator. But let's just, again, going on the line, uh, I want to definitely get to this point of what happens if, you know, what are some of the other ways that we can do this aside from what we've shown thus far? And that takes me to this particular video with Randy. Randy, take it away. ...about the opportunity that exists because... I want. I just want Randy to come on and share uh -oh. more of her experiences. Hold on. What happened, and then the maybe... Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, essentially what happened is I wanted her to share, and then that way, you know, I'm as you guys already know me, right? I'm a big believer in sharing. Um, and the way I see it is I would hate that to know that someone knew about contract opportunities that were going unfulfilled and they didn't tell us about. And I, it was something that was in my wheelhouse. So I thought that was just that, you know, that just didn't make sense to me personally. Um, and so I asked Randy to come on today uh, against her will um, <laughs> and, and share her story and talk a little bit about some of those opportunities. And maybe we could pull some people um, out from the woods and from you know the backyards and the boondocks who can do some of these contracts because um, the government has the need, they've got the opportunity. So all we need is now is the people to actually fill in those gaps. So Randy, tell us, tell us a little bit about uh, what happened. I mean, I gave a synopsis. But... Yeah, so meeting with this particular agency for the second time, okay. um, first time they they like you know my client and they wish that we could help them all around the nation um but not really comfortable and ready to do that so the second time we went back and again they brought it up and this time she brought in con two contracting officers and an engineer to meet with us for potential opportunities that they had one of the both the CEOs, um, one said, like, for example, she's had to bid a job Hold four on. times. Can I stop you? How did you get to that point of getting the meeting? <laughs> oh, persistence, tracking people you down. Know, like, I mean, because because again, let's paint the whole picture in. Oh, you know, okay, you're skipping okay. steps for those newbies out here who are unfamiliar with it. You just feel skipping, newbie. You know? You know, okay. like, come on, Randy, you didn't know this. How long ago? You didn't know this not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I said I still feel like a newbie. Okay, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Following the field. So following your course, right? Uh -huh. Finding the gatekeeper, which is the Ostabu, the small business liaison. I started there. Actually, I met her at a, the very first federal um, event that I went to. And I kind of just have held on to her since 